were trying to film at the time was a debunk video that was just showing all the normal things that happen in a cemetery that people think are paranormal, but there's a logical explanation for. Um, and then when we got out here, the the investigation turned up a bunch more stuff that we didn't expect. So it just it went completely wrong for us, or right, depending on how you look at it. My name is Emilio Garcia. I'm lead investigator for Paranormal Brothers of Paranormal. We've been here a couple times. Um, probably one of the most profound experiences we had was actually right here behind us. Um, I had seen a dark shadow dart between some of these headstones and went back into that corner. Uh, took a couple steps back and started snapping some photos and we got a mist type apparition you know, sort of standing behind one of the headstones here. My name is Allie. I'm with uh, NTPI. Um, I take photos. Um, he has me listed like as a forensic photographer. I took um, some forensic classes in college. So no, we did have a weird sighting um, out here where me, Brad, and Sarah all three saw different bits of the same thing, and I'm. I feel weird talking about it because I don't want to seem like I'm crazy, but, <laughs> but what happened, like, it's like, so there, where there was fence where we were climbing through earlier, that used to be completely open, and, you know, Sarah was, like, closest to it, I was probably over back by that tree where that, like, little headstone is, and, like, all I can hear was Sarah saying, oh my god, its legs are wrong, and I was like, what? You know, I was like, when somebody says something like that, you're like, oh, what? <laughs> you know, she's like, its legs are wrong. Its legs are wrong. And I looked over and then like kind of over where that open area was, I saw like a head. It looked like a white face, like poking out, kind of leaning over like this, you know, looking. And it was probably like, I guess, like where the boom mic is like but over in that tree so it was big whatever it was and like when we were talking to brad about it like he's like yeah i just i saw like this torso moving through the trees and they went right along that back fence and i went straight back maybe 50 yards and i was shining my flashlight around I, there were trees like a uh, full-on like oak trees with leaves that were not like the pine needles you've got out here are the cedar trees and it was arced like you know the road you go down and it looks like it's bridged over the top and when I got to the farthest point back I realized I couldn't see or hear anybody else so I wasn't scared but I turned around because I didn't want to be out by myself in the woods at night came back we did the ghost hunt about a week later and we had uh, the experience where we saw something walk by the gate back there so we came back the next day because we were looking for animal dens and that sort of thing. And when I walked through that gate, there wasn't a forest. There was a road and a field. My name's Ashton Rogers, and I am the lead investigator of NT Paranormal Investigations based out of Fort Worth, Texas. Our main goal as a group is to just get to the truth of a claim or a matter. It's not necessarily about debunking every claim or trying to prove the existence of anything just to see what's there for each individual story. Hey, my name is Sarah Hatfield. I'm with NT Paranormal and I do the voice recordings EVPs. A lot of it looks like it's really super important but it's pretty mundane stuff. Uh, we just have an array of different types of digital recorders. They all capture in different ranges, have different sensitivity mics, stuff like that on them. Um, this one here, uh, interesting thing we do with our sound recording experience, we also use old style cassette. Since one of the theories is, and we don't necessarily subscribe to this, that spirits have something to do with like EMFs and things like that, since these use magnetic reel to reel and the motor inside actually gives off its own EMF. So if they really fed off of that energy, they should be able to communicate with this easier. We haven't necessarily seen that happen at all uh, and we really haven't seen any correlations between electromagnetic fields and any activity that we've gotten we just we do it as a baseline because there is a correlation between emf and perceived paranormal activity it'll make you feel paranoid when we're outside like this it's harder because you know you want the situation controlled but we do the same experiments everywhere we try to do them in the same order with the same conditions as much as we can but it was it was towards the very beginning 
I don't know. We, we've had experiences here in the past that have been like strange and profound, but it's every investigation since then, it's really hard to say that anything paranormal has actually happened out here other than there's just been EVPs. We have got EVPs, in the, but it all that stuff just like tapered off after a while. Yeah. After like six or seven investigations, it, it's we just completely stopped getting. It's almost like we like irritated it into submission. <laughs> yeah, it got used to you guys. Maybe. Like, shut up, go away. Well, if, we, like, if we don't do anything, they go home faster. So, like one of your theories though that I like is you know do repetitive investigations at the same place so mm-hmm. that if there really is something intelligent there it might get used to you and give you more responses and things like that and that was kind of true for here for a while yeah but also, then it kind of hit a wall also the advantage of um repeat investigations is we do get to go back and debunk yeah like stuff that scared us before yeah like, there have been so... a lot of times like on this investigation we found something mm-hmm. but then the next one at the follow-up we figured out that oh that wasn't paranormal it was something it's like, else yeah the tree popping well and i mean like antioch was horrifying the first two times we went and then it was just obviously this was us being stupid yeah because i remember like even before we started the paranormal investigation stuff and it was just you and me and you know sometimes like steven or somebody else like you know i wouldn't even get out of the car no you wouldn't you'd always sit in the car uh-uh. I, antioch used to scare the crap out of me do you guys have any closing comments for the documentary as kind of a wrap up for it? No. No. Not unless they want. We have no, no wise words. No wise words. <laughs> no wise words. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys want? Can think of? Want to try? Not that I can think of. Not really. Do you guys I mean, the night. The night sort know? of. Night sort of went um, as expected. I know what I want yeah. to try, but we have to find a person willing to do it. What's what? That? I want to put one person in the cemetery with equipment and drive away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the experiences would start up immediately. Yeah. The anxiety of the room left. Preferably Allie. <coughs> no. Because You're the most inclined to anxiety. I know. You'd be the best subject. <laughs> I don't know. With the way the night is tonight, I don't even think it would bother me that much. Yeah. It's, it's really bright. The, the lights from Cleveland are really bright. Yeah, and that party going on so loud, and there's no sense of any isolation out here whatsoever. So, here's the thing if I were y'all, I would leave after we leave and just try sitting in the middle of the cemetery, just completely quiet. Mm. J- just you three yeah, by yourselves. Back yeah. And like, just kind of, yeah, I mean, we can do it tonight too. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I would just try it, just go like sit out there for five or ten minutes, like back to back, not looking at each other, mm-hmm. and just sit in the center of the cemetery and just be quiet for a minute and see if anything happens on your own after the group leaves. Or they decide not to ever come back. <laughs> yeah, I might not hear from y'all again. <laughs> so what happened to those guys? I don't know, but they found three bodies out there. <laughs> three more bodies. <laughs> that's always my worry, sending people out here. Yeah. Because that's going to be the one time someone gets murdered or eaten by a mountain lion, and it's going to be my fault. That's a little... 